Now, I'll to give you a little bit of my background to show you the history of this. Uh, I first got involved in starting to look at materials in 1984 when we designed the national headquarters for the Environmental Defense Fund in New York. And we started asking manufacturers what were in their products because we were worried about the off-gassing of carpets and glues and paints and things like that and where the wood came from for the furniture and, and so on. And the typical answer we got from a supplier was, it's proprietary, it's legal, go away. And uh, we're still doing this now, it's 20 years later, uh, and sometimes we still hear the same answer. But we now work with companies, uh, ha and have worked with companies, whose annual revenues, uh, until recently, uh, were over a trillion and a half dollars. Um, so this, this is catching on. Um, in 2000, Business Week magazine in the United States had, had this on their cover. Uh, but look at the language. Killing, danger, sick. All frightening language. We're not trying to use frightening language. We're trying to use the language of positive change. Because what we found is when we ask a manufacturer what's in their product, we get a letter that comes back like this one which says, I assure you, we do not know all of the components of the formulations that comprise the systems we buy. Most people don't know what they're making. They say that their suppliers send them products and they put them in their products and they sell them to the customers. Uh, and so as we work through the supply chains, we realize how little people know about what they actually make. And the response of society has typically been to first warn everyone. And we find it a bit surprising. This is in California, Proposition 65. If you walk into a building in California, you are greeted with this sign. Warning, the state of California requires that we warn you that the property contains chemicals known to the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. This is telling you as you walk into a building that you might be exposing yourselves to things that cause cancer and birth defects. These chemicals may be contained in emissions and fumes from building materials, products and materials used to maintain the property, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the first instinct of culture is to warn everyone, but it doesn't change the design. You don't go to California now and find out that the carpets have been changed and they've removed the cancer from the face fibers of the carpet. All they've done is warn you that they're there. It's amazing. If we, look at the, if we look at the electronics, these are from the Basel Auction Network. If we look at electronics and what's happening with them, this woman is about to expose herself and her children to four pounds of highly toxic lead neurotoxin in order to recover some copper from this CRT, which has come from a hospital in Los Angeles because we don't recycle this in the United States. We send them to China. So the first instinct of culture, things like reach and... Uh, uh, and Proposition 65 are restricted substances, lead, free, solder, uh, things like that, restricted substances. The next step will be a full inventory of the 104,000 chemicals that are used by humans and an assessment of these chemicals based on human and ecological health. And the third generation, the next generation, will be optimization of these products based on these inventories and assessments. So we're trying to move toward this optimization in a hurry. So the first thing we do is inventory. We did a textile project in Switzerland where we looked at 8,000 chemicals in the textile industry and using these intellectual filters I'm about to show you, eliminated 7,962. We were left with 38 chemicals to do the entire fabric line. It's so safe you can eat it. But the supply chains are very complex and very deep. The next thing we do is assessment. And these are the 19 criteria that we use at MBDC to assess a product. We look for priority criteria, no more cancer, no more disruption of endocrine systems, no more genetic mutation, reproductive toxicity, or birth defects. We design these out of the products. We want no more poisonous materials, no more toxic materials, and so on, exposed to biological pathways. Here this is in plain language, things that cause cancer, mimic hormones, etc., are immediately poisonous, or poisonous through exposure irritants. We want environmental health criteria where we look for toxicity in water for vertebrates and vertebrates and plants. We want to know if things bioaccumulate, are they persistent, do they have toxic heavy metals, things like that. So we, we worry about this kind of condition from an environmental health perspective. And then we worry about production process. We want to know how things are made, where they come from, where they go, do they use genetic engineering, animal testing, 
do they cause climate change and so on. So the cradle to cradle design framework is essentially looking at all materials as nutrients. We want products to be recycled and we want systems that allow them to be recycled. And so we've developed a certification process where we now look at materials first and the biological or technical condition. Are they designed for recycling with design for environment? Do they use renewable energy? And the higher amount of renewable energy you use, the higher you score on the certification. Is the water clean, clean enough to drink? The cleaner it is, the higher you score on the certification. And are you being socially responsible? Are people being treated fairly throughout the process? We characterize chemicals as being either of little or no hazard to high hazard for phase out. And we've developed a tool which we use and a database which now has thousands of chemicals in it, which looks at these individual materials used in production through these lenses uh, and characterizes products as being carcinogenic, or teratogenic, mutagenic, uh, and so on and so forth. And so we can quickly work with a client on the redesign of their product based on these, on these uh, questions in context for manufacturing. And on these thousands of chemicals, we will be releasing this database to make it open access in the next year, year and a half, so designers will have access to this database around the world. Uh, we're very excited about that. We've developed a supply chain tool that allows you to communicate with your entire supply chain up and downstream, so you can explain to the manufacturers of the various parts that are supplied to you or things that you're supplying to them in this cradle-to-cradle -cradle context. And that allows us then to do uh, an optimization of products where we take products that have a lot of the red material in the first instance and then design it so that it, we remove the reds and limit the number of materials that we don't understand as we work toward optimization of, of products. And we've found that we can optimize almost any product. We've been very surprised at how effective the tools can be once the client companies are engaged in the process.